Thank you, David. And it's a hard act to follow with all these great uh, people ahead of me. And uh, I really appreciate what everyone has to say because really, it is outrageous. Really, we, our provincial government, and it's not just these lands, as those of us who are white fighting the run of river projects that are meant to be so green when they're selling off our rivers to independent power projects. What we're seeing up in the Northeast and selling off the lands up there for oil shale or gas shale, it's all over our coast. Enbridge Pipeline across northern BC to put tankers on our coast. BC is really for sale, but here we are. We're fighting this one right here in our own backyard. It's an area that I've known as I was born in Victoria. I've known since I was a child and loved. It is our coast, it is our home. This is what's up for sale this time, and that's why we have to stand up and take notice. And we really do. And for those, I was just following up after Calvin, and you know, one of our ambitions through the last three years of fighting this issue uh, has been to have the government, the provincial government, take responsibility for their actions. Uh, the first reaction when the Auditor General report came out, and I remember talking to the media about it, that they went up to interview uh, the new Minister of Forest, Pat Bell, and they, they said he lost it. He was banging on his desk with the Auditor General's report. He was so angry with it. And he tried to get some of the poor civil servants to write an opposite report just before the Auditor General's report came out. This is not on. Uh, the Auditor General acts as a public watchdog on behalf of the public interest and the people of British Columbia. And I think we all should thank um, John Doyle for the excellent job he did, because he was under attack after this, because the, the government didn't want to hear what he had to say. And uh, they didn't want to hear it. I recently heard Minister Bill Bennett, a uh, community and uh, rural Deve development minister, uh, on the CDC, and it's just about a week ago, and he was asked about it. He said, well, I still think it was a good decision. Well, it was not a good decision. <laughs> I think we have to tell this government, and there are enough of us in this room, and if we all say it with one voice, as Gordon uh, Planis said, we must all work together with one voice and work for the interests of us all. We have to tell the government, and I think where the buck stops is with the Premier. And that's with Gordon Campbell, and we tell him what we think. And that means letters from you and letters from your friends and everybody that you know. And also, I think we should ask for a group meeting. I think it's time, it, you know, he's coming out of the glow of the Olympics. Here is an Olympic legacy. This is the 2010 legacy. This is what we want for future generations and those unborn, to quote, quote the chief again. This is what we need for the future. We really, you know, we don't like the way we've been treated. We don't like this $200 billion gift to a, a, a forest company who made bad investments and got bad debts. That is not a government responsibility to bail out a forest company. The government responsibility is to protect the public interest, which has not occurred in this, in this place. But it's only with mass outrage and a lot of noise that you get any government like this to listen. They just got re-elected a year or almost ago. But the, the principles they stand for, and Stephen Owen said he has to take a back seat at the moment. He, or anybody who knows Stephen Owen, is a very visionary man. And he's now vice president of UBC and has been involved in the UBC proposal for a research forest. And I've been in touch with him a few times. But he did say to me, let's look at what the government says. This is the best place on earth, right? Let's treat it that way. He talk, they talk about a sustainability mandate. Where are the sustainability communities in this field? Where are the sustainability forests in this deal? Where are the highest practices in the world in this deal? Where is the accommodation for First Nations? But we can find all of these in the UBC proposal. The UBC proposal does just that. And it is, as, as uh, David Anderson pointed out, it's a public institution that looks after the public interest. And a research forest, an education forest, with also the opportunities for settlement of some of the land claims, with also opportunities for protection of parks and recreation areas,
but an education learning facility with all kinds of training opportunities. This is by far the highest and best use for these lands for the benefit of the people. <laughs> CRD because they have been really ambushed, as Calvin said, ambushed on this project and have been working extremely hard. And I know there was a meeting today, I don't know all the outcomes, but I know they're looking at what they can possibly buy with the parks levy, which is limited in what they can do, and we do need to support them. But we need to look at the bigger proposal, and that is the UBC proposal. And that requires money from the provincial government and a change to the borrowing policy for UBC to be able to do this and they do have the funds and the time to pay it back and support in every way from all of us. And I think we can do it because you have to dream big. This is our coast. These are our forest lands. These are for the future. This is what we must do and we can do. So that's where we have to go. So, letters to Campbell. Letters to the Times columnist, letters to everybody you can think of, and don't forget the Vancouver Sun, this is a UBC proposal. Let's get across that pond and actually put some pressure where some of the government actually think the world lives, and not here. They've ignored and abandoned the people of, British, the people of Vancouver Island, I might say the British Columbia as well, but not the lower mainland. And, you know, it is time we take back control of what's going on here. here so we here. do need to do those things. I think everything has pretty well been said. I know Dogwood asked me if I would uh, uh, ask you all to sign in if you haven't, because having a list is power, and we can all work together with that. And also, there will be a pot being passed around at some point uh, for people to put donations in. Uh, all of this uh, takes some work. And I also want to acknowledge the magnificent overhead of uh, the aerial photographs were taken by Garth Lenz, who's one of the best aerial photographers in the world. And I really appreciate that he went up in a small plane and took these photographs for us and for this campaign. And David Leversey, who's produced all these fabulous new maps for us. Nothing more important than standing up for our land and our